know we want to fly? No, until we know, until we've done the route planning, like with that, the fuel right, planner, right. to see what. And you can tell me what you'd like to go at. Just looking at the departures here. Pulling up the same. So this would be a good time for you to tell me how to work the autopilot unless you plan on reaching for it. No, we don't have to do that. So looking at the center panel, it's yep. actually super simple. So the two right, two large paddles on the right hand side under the engage thing, obviously um, aileron and LR elevator um, autopilots. No way. Yes, <laughs> that's A and L. So it's not like an A and B. It's actually. This one works the other one, this one works the elevator. Okay. Pretty cool. Fine. Um, so the, you don't have to worry about the um, altitude hold one so much, the button on the okay. left hand side. Um, so okay. basically, we'll go left or right. So starting in the far left, the knob with, it looks like it's got um, six positions there. That's just for the flight director. It's not, right. doesn't so affect the, the autopilot. Course heading course are obvious. Altitude hold uh, does just that and holds you at whatever altitude that you select it on at. Um, pitch command is basically just that. It uh, sets the pitch for the airplane in mm -hmm. the climb or descent. Um, right at that, four position switch, man VR, low auto approach, and man glide slope, it looks like. Um, you can leave it in man if you want to turn the heading select on, which is just using the toggle switch to the right of it. Got it. VOR look is nav mode, auto approach is um, approach mode, and then uh, mm -hmm. man GS, I'm not even sure what it does, to be honest. Uh, let's see, that might be manual, still heading select for the lateral, but it'll track the glide slope, perhaps. Perhaps. Don't know why you'd want to do that, but... <laughs> uh, uh, but heading select really uh, not sure you'd want to do that. It's fairly obvious. And then uh, on the right, IS off in altitude hold. Should be fairly self-explanatory. That's for the vertical portion. OK, right. gotcha. And that's really it. And so if we have an altitude pre-selected and we're in IS mode, then IS will disengage. And it'll will it go to off or will it go to will it snap uh, to out? It should go to off. It goes to off, OK. Yeah. I see. And that is one. It's a simism. Apparently in the 732 in real life, it doesn't have the ability to intercept altitudes like that, but uh, for our purposes here, it does. Got it. All right. And so to toggle between nav mode, which will be VOR log mode, and heading, I'm really just clicking the heading select on and off, and that's about it? Correct. All right. I don't so if heading select is on, you can just move it to nav, and it'll obviously automatically kick off the heading mode. I see. Gotcha. Okay. Sounds good. I'll get my recorder going here. I mean, I, uh, uh, the beauty of me recording it locally is I can edit it after, so I'm not too worried about continuity. Cool. Not that bad. Um, okay. Yeah, get we'll be busy going. enough. I won't be reading the chat too much anyway. I'll try and make those text responses. Gotcha. Okie dokie. So let's look at the right. departure. Ready to go, So I'm looking at the Offshore 7 departure. So, San Francisco, 281 radial, Descenzi, uh, slash SFO 6DME at or above 2.5. Mm -hmm. It's basically straight out to 6 miles and 2,500 feet plus. And then a left to 203. It's very simple. Okay, I've got 115.8 set for the nav one for San Francisco initially. And it's going to be a 281 course out of there. Uh, I'll let you take care of anything that's on your 
side, like directly in front of you. Okay. I'll I'll leave with you, but that that's going to be a two eighty one course, and then uh, two hundred three heading after that, and then we're going to need point rays, I guess, in the standby. Yeah. Get that up there for you. One thirteen seven. And that's the that's going to be one fifty one at Sanzi. Okay. Do you have a preference what I do with my side? Do you want me to back you up on the primary course that we're tracking? Do you want me to be set up for the next one? How would you like me to have it on my side? I wouldn't mind that duplication of effort at the start. Okay. And then as we're going along, say uh, we're getting ready to switch to a different VOR, having that up on your side just so we know it's alive. Got it. So 15.8 and 13.7 are ready to go. With initial course, I have 281. Right. I will have 281 dialed in as my first course. That is set. So I'm setting 203 and the adding bug just as a visual aid for, for the me. For the next turn, sounds good. Yeah. I'm actually gonna set I'm gonna set my course to 281 as well, just to keep the. Um, I find if that card is much easier to see than the heading bug. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, actually, yeah, that departure looks pretty simple. That's the 151 all the way down, all the way to out to 101 DME. We might lose the DME on point raise. We should be aware of that. Okay. Uh, we can always request uh, a dead reckoning leg or. Right. Uh, let's see. Same thing might happen with Morrow Bay as well. So we should be prepared for the for the the navs not to work so well okay. in this clunky old plane. Yeah, and we'll just cool. be prepared to do some dead reckon. And if if that happens, or I'm sorry, we will let ATC. I'll advise ATC and request the vector to next fixed or next VOR or something like that. Bow. All right. Yeah. So we'll take it out to Cyprus, 101 DME, then a left turn, 115, mm -hmm. all the way to Morrow Bay. Actually, we are. Oh, we're planning on Santa Catalina, so we never make it tomorrow, but we make it only to McKee. Okay. Or Mickey. And then a right turn. This is going to be kind of fun, actually. Yeah, this is going to be uh, really fun. So we're joining radials for VORs that we're never going to hit, like we're joining a Big Sur VOR. Sorry, yeah. a Big Sur radial. Got it. At 49 miles. Gee, I don't know if we're even going to be picking it up at that point. <laughs> We've had problems with Big Sur in the past, right? Not being very strong. Sure. It's going to be interesting. Like okay. It. I'm just writing some freaks down here on my end, just for memory aid. Yeah, it's cool. I really like this departure if you're working at old school. Yep. You know what I might do is I might go back and edit these VORs at some point in the sim to make sure their nav strength is... Or well, the transmit distances are uh, accurate because some of these are high altitude VORs. They should be receivable from well over 100 miles away. Right. Yeah, it should be appropriate. And they sure ain't right now. So much cool stuff going on. All right, one more. One more for Santa Catalina. All right. I'm feeling good about the nav. I can begin setting up some comrades if you like. Sounds good. I'm going to give us some ground power here. All right. to make things aesthetically pleasing. Let's move my date and time to the right. To about 18 local. Cool. Set up all the comms for us. Oh, right. 
All right, our clearance delivery ground tower and the anticipated departure frequency all set. Okay. That's both on COM2. Unless for some reason you wanted to chat idly with the <laughs> tower controller for a bit, you're welcome to do that. It depends on who's working. <laughs> entering some stuff in the sky vector here. All right, so comms are... Uh, I got the comm set, and the names are set for the first... Um, First two looks. Okay. How are we looking on weight and balance? What do you want to fly with today? Yeah, that's what I'm actually just doing right now. Is trying to figure out what these legs are going to look like. Okay, 400 miles total, so it will give us fuel for that, which is 46 packs and cargo are being randomized, so actually fairly light, sort of, a little bit more than a third of our total um, cargo, cargo fuel and uh, packs capacity. Okay. Let's, do you want to go all the way up to 36? Uh, let's see. I'd suggest uh, 350. We're going to be eastbound, so 350 would be oh, yeah, we are eastbound. Okay. correcto. Plus, uh, it's actually saying optimum altitude according to my weight and balance calcula calculator showing 350. John Wynn Ground, Perfect. location on the field and verify of the weather. Okay. Did you want me to get us filed for that? Please. Number 117, where my one men are right. The 732 Sun Alpha, San Francisco Hotel, Joint Offshore 7, Charlie, Santa Catalina Direct, Lima, 350. Contact tower holding short. Uh, 480 True, sound good to you? That's about what we trued out yesterday. Yep. Any alternate required today? Uh, let's look at the weather again, I should say. No. Negative? It's clear, clear in a million. All right. Okay, we're found. Perfecto. Got our position lights on here. Let's throw on the logo light, I guess. So comms and nav are all set. Courses are all set up. Weight and balance is all done. Did we file Santa Catalina? We did offshore seven Santa Catalina direct. Okay. Oh, so we're not doing the Tandy three arrival. Correct. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Shame. I do love that arrival. Yeah. So brief the weather. Uh, winds two nine zero at seventeen, visibility ten. I'm assuming plus view at seven hundred, temperature fifteen two point ten, altimeter two nine or eight eight. Two nine eight eight. Okay. Which is set left. I am set on the right. Two nine eight eight. Perfect. Um, the weather trending down. If we get stuck here for um a very very long time, uh, the weather's gonna come up. But we'd have to be here for until we leave tomorrow. <laughs> gotcha. And weather at destination, um, essentially clear in a million. Um, trending down, but not significantly. Um, okay. I have a lighting question for you. Yes. I just increased the lights on my uh, the right-hand side. Is there lighting for the center panel? There is. The dim switch for the entire cabin. Oh, where's that at? Um, very, very top of the overhead panel. Um, basically, you go past where all the window heat switches, and then you'll see me toggling it here. 
Hmm. I see the window heats. Oh, even higher than that. Yeah. I see the dome. That's the one. There's the dome. I'm gonna try that. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, actually, this panel break, this one should do it as well. So. Cool. There we go. Well, where would you like it? Um, uh, good for now. It's not gonna be a big deal. We'll see how dark it gets on the way. All right. Uh, I got some pressurization to set here, I guess. Thirty-five thousand. It's all on the order right now. That's right. Are we happy with that? Yep, yeah, and we'll leave it on the ground side until we're taxiing, and then we'll flip it over to flight. Got it. All right. Yeah, this is my first time running the system, so you may have to uh, coach yeah, me along on some of that. Yep. Yeah. Should be no major Potential surprises. fatal situation. Oh, the map light. I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit. How do you turn the thing on? Um, so basically where your right wrist would be when you're sitting in the airplane, um, low right of your right wrist, there's a, another dial similar to the ones you use to turn out the brightness and for your panel. And I there's a little it. switch to the right of that, and that'll turn the light on. Look at that. That's insane. Okay. All right, so... Well, if only I had some charts to look at. <laughs> yeah. Can we soon explain 11? Hmm. All right, boss. Uh, Actually, you're boss today. That's true. So listen up. Exactly. <laughs> I guess I should now. Uh, so right. we, um, I'm ready to do, start the APU, get everything up and running, and then uh, we can light the stoves on, on push. I'm happy with that. Okay, okay. So uh, you want me to take care of the APU and such? Yeah, anything you're not comfortable with, let me know, and I'll follow along with you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start the APU. Not a whole lot more to do other than start it, I assume. Uh, and then yeah, just we're just going to make sure that those, um, the two aft fuel pumps right now, we're going to turn those on. Perfect. And I'm also going to turn the, or get you to turn the anti-collider on. The anti-collider, okay. That's the beacon, I guess. Okay, up, I so confused that with a position light before for some reason. Yeah. Okay, so APU's coming up. Beautiful. Mm. Yep, she should come up there. I see it moving. Okay. EGT is moving. Clipper 117, when you contact tower, it's going to be uh, the west tower. When do the forward pumps come on, if at all? Uh, before we start the engines. Okay, so it's aft for the APU only? Right. Okay. And I believe it only draws from the right side anyway, but um, I'm just that's what I was briefed, so it's... Right. Which is basically, that's my way of saying someone on the internet told me to do that. Okay. Alright, APU gen's available. Okay. It's coming on. Beautiful. And it's taking the load. Alright, got it. So we turn the APU bleed on. And left packs um, on. on. So APU bleed right there. One and two. Uh, no, it's actually pack. the one in the middle. Ah, oh, that's right. There's the engine bleed. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we want the one labeled APU. That would be smart. And there we go. Pressure's coming up. And what else can we do? We can turn all the window heats on. So the there's five white toggle switches up by the window. The two left and two right. Let's see. Window heat. Window heat. Okay. You want? Did you say all of them? Uh, the four, two on the left and two on the right. The one in the middle doesn't. It's the overheat um, detect. Okay, window heats are all on all four. Okay, so get ground power disconnected. Nothing turned off, so we're doing everything right. Okay, okay. That's, I think. Taking another cursory look at the overhead panel, we are. I'm actually going to turn the yaw dampener on. You can turn the yaw dampener on. And that is what? Uh, left hand side of the overhead panel. Scene. Beauty. Okay, that's on. And we're at this point, um, obviously, because we've diligently done the pre flight. Oh, yeah. We are ready. No question. This thing is ready, man. Yeah, we spent <laughs> hours on that. So, yeah, other than that, we're ready to go. All right. If you want to do the, let's see, are we going to be pushing onto a moving area? Let me have a look at where we are. 
to sort of cheat and look at it. I don't believe we are. I think we can push here without talking. Let me double check the facility diagram. Clipper 117, John Wayne Tower. Frost from my one on the left, from my one on the right. Clipper take off. Up and link in, new tab. Yeah, uh, we can push back quite a way without uh, touching Mike, so I'm anticipating 2-8 uh, left. Yeah. When we do, when we are ready for taxi, so it's probably me, Mike Alpha, Mike Alpha, Bravo, Foxtrot, something like that with right. the crossings. But we'll see where they actually end up having this cross. Cool. Is it pretty much getting nighttime for you? Uh, it's 18, 18 local, no. No, it will. Like I think we'll be landing either in the dark or close to it. Okay, let me just check my date and time here. Yeah, I can give you an exact time that I'm set to. It's uh, eighteen eleven local. Okay. All right, much brighter for me now. It's really dark for some reason. Okay. Uh, want me to grab clearance for us, please? I don't know if you want to push in the meantime. It's totally up to while I get up. And I'm not sure what the normal sequence would be there. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll get the clearance and then we'll push and start. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Concurrent activity is a wonderful thing. So is decisiveness. All right. San Francisco clearance, WestJet 132 with Alpha, IFR to John Wayne. Clipper well, 117, cool. contact, look out of departure. Have a good day. Okay, double check on the comps. 118.2, yep, that's set. Let's get 132, San Francisco clearance, clear to John Wayne Airport, offshore 7 departure, Santa Catalina transition, then as valve, climb via SID, except maintain 5000. Expect flight level 350, 5 minutes after departure, departure frequency 135.1, squawk 2315. Wash at 132, clear to John Wayne, offshore, 7 departure, Santa Catalina transition, then it's filed, climb via SID, except maintain 5, expect 350 and 5, departure 351, squawk 2315. Wash at 132, read back, correct, runway 28 left for departure. Okay, plan 28 left, Wash at 132. Air 23 kilo off of San Francisco Tower, I'm a 28 left to the land. Okay, so I did try and rotate the nose on push, but it wasn't working. I assume it's because we don't have any hydraulic pressure, so... Doesn't make Sounds any sense, reasonable. but... I assume that that is what's going on. Two, three... I can't read my own writing. Seven, five, or one, five? Uh, two, three, one, five. Thank you. Okay, transponder to altitude, that's done. Okay, and for comms, we'll swap over to ground. All right, we have a clearance, no surprises, going to 5k initially. And we are on ground. Okay, I'll just get you to double check that squat code in the machine. Uh, let's see. 2315 is what I'm seeing on the transponder. You want me to double check it with the controller? That is not what I'm seeing. If I move mine, let me know if it moves. Uh, yes, I'm seeing that. And what do you see set? 6451. Okay, so a bit of a disconnect there. I'll have to uh, double check the file on that one. That's strange, okay. I haven't seen that before. Since I'm. Uh, since I'm the observer, mm -hmm. my transponder doesn't matter. Okay. So go ahead. I'm invisible to everyone. So why don't you go ahead and set that to 2315. Okay, then. 2315 set in the transponder. All right, very good. I have to open a window here. It's, it's, my machine's working hard, so is my brain. No worries. 
This is why you have to put pants on the stream in case you have to stand up at some point. <laughs> All right. So you ready for me to start anything up? Um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so we'll start with two. Okay. And yeah, we'll just make sure we get that mind. left packs off too, so it's not stealing anywhere. Okay. Bleeding. So kill the packs. Uh, isolation valve open or closed? Uh, you can leave it on auto. It's fine. Oh, that's right. There's an auto setting. I can't see it from here. Now I can. So just go ahead and start two yeah. at this point. Um, yeah, and I'll get the boost pumps for you here. So we're ready to go for the start on two. Oh, that's right. Okay, so all the pumps got it. And all right, starting two. Goes to ground. Pressure drops. Watching in two. two. You said looking for twenty, right? And 20, then introduce yeah. the fuel. Correct. Engine fuel, fuel engine. Nice, yeah. ITT's coming up. It's a pretty cool start in this machine. Not that it's it is awesome, but it's also like temperature wise. It's a cool <laughs> temperature start. Cool. cool. Take a little while, but we're there. Yeah, let's get started on two. On two, yes. Fire up the. Is it okay to fire up the generator on two? You can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see them splitting the load. And. Excellent. Uh, I can go ahead and add bleed. I'll turn on the number two engine bleed in that case. To sure. Yeah, I don't think it's more. SOP, but we can, you know. Oh, is that right? We can do that. Yeah. I don't think it's SOP, but. Ah. Okay. Would you rather I kill it? No, it's fine. I'll see if it's any. I was, I was about to say that was not a very spirited. No, no, they're not. Rise in N one there, so I'd like. I'm curious now, so I'll do starting one, and we'll see if any of this happens any faster. It does come up a little quicker. Okay. Comes in. Fuel engine, engine fuel. Rise in the ITT, we did 520. Concur. I don't know, the N1 rise is still about the same speed to me. Yeah. I don't see much difference. I gotta change all my panel views to be co-pilot centric. All right. <laughs> They're sort of pilot centric right now. Okay, we got two running engines. Get the number one Jenny back on. Oh, sorry, on. Yeah. Okay, and the. All right, we got two good generators. We got both bleeds on in that case. Kill the APU bleed. Right. Packs and kill the APU. I assume. Correct. Okay. Packs done. That's all happy. APU gen. Off and ready to shut down APU. That is HEP pinning. Good stuff. We can turn on the pedostatic heat, the electrical hydraulic pumps. Okay, hydraulic pumps are on, just waiting for the light to extinguish. They're uh, gone. Good stuff. And the pedostatics are Good on. Good stuff. So, quick checklist. Uh, yacht emptor's on, fuel checked, uh, we have enough for the trip, the fuels are balanced, um, galley power needs to come on, which is just above the standby power, I'm going to hit it now, there it is. I see it move, yep. Uh, emergency exit lights are not required, uh, no smoking and seatbelt lights, you can hit those, window heat is on, hydraulics are on, packs and bleeds are set, autopilots are disengaged, auto brake not required, speed brake down and in the detent checked on my side, parking brake is set, it is, radios and transponders are set, rudder nailer on trim free and zero. Um, rudder trim is at zero, aileron on trim is at zero, that's correct. Um, papers aboard and correct, FMC CDU, just kidding, instruments cross checked, they are correct. And this thing doesn't have color TV. That's true. Uh, v speeds will do a flaps 2 departure, V1 is 127, VR is 127, and V2 is 134. And the engine takeoff setting at 97.4 N1. Got it. Yeah, that's briefed. 
quick restart, doors okay. closed, packs off, start pressure, where all that stuff's not required, electrical generators are on, pedo heat's on, air conditioning's on, it's set, recall, checked, nothing, start leader, rears, idle detent, they are, uh, clearance left, taxi clearance, that's all we need, taxi clearance. Okay, did you want flaps 2 now, or do you want to do that later? Yeah, you can set it now, that's good. Okay, flaps 2 set, and... Scene. And I'll grab taxi clearance. We're at terminal 1. San Francisco ground, WestJet 132, just pushed out of terminal 1 with Alpha, ready for taxi. WestJet 132, San Francisco ground, room 28 left, taxi via Bravo, Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot, hold short, room 1 left, contact tower holding short, and amend that to be Alpha for first taxi, Alpha, Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot. Runway 2 at left, tanks via Alpha, Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot, hold short of runway 1 left, and tower when holding short for WestJet 132. Alright, so it's going to be Alpha, Foxtrot 1 to Foxtrot. Alrighty, so I'm just looking at the map, Alpha. Jeez, so Foxtrot 1. Either a right 180, a very tight right 180, or a left 180 out of here. Cool. I'm suggest I think a left 180 would be the way to go. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm ready to taxi. Parking brake is off. Brakes checked. And the machine is reacting the way I want it to. There we go. And if you want to grab the taxi lights and all that other good stuff. I shall. Position lights. There. We got more lights? Oh, we do. We have taxi lights. Outstanding. And lights for everybody, because pilots like switches. Alright. All set. And then when does the pressurization go to flight? Um, we should be able to do it now, actually. Done. Cool. Okay, I see the cabin pressure gauge, just seeing that for the first time, that's good. Okay, so Alpha is going to be the inner taxiway. Okay. Basically follow this round to the left. I love how this thing taxis. Wave hello and goodbye to the easily accessible one left. <laughs> <laughs> Trundle wish. along. Would be nice to take that. Yeah. I'm sitting here turning jet fuel into noise. Good thing we're not in Leah 25. <laughs> be out of fuel by the time we get to the <laughs> Does it just burn fuel on the ground like crazy? They do. I'm, I, I kid you not, the burn rate on the ground is not a whole lot different than the burn rate at cruise up wow. at altitude. The engines are just designed to run forever at high altitude. Eh? Yeah, they're low. They're low bypass engines. Then right. they're not very efficient at idle. They just just take gallons and gallons of fuel to keep running. All right. Basically, at where the last terminal is sticking out, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, it should be right on Foxtrot One. Got it. Yeah, it looks like. And we're going to be short of one left. At which point, we'll swap to the tower. Sounds good. Yeah, it's nice with the Foxtrot one there, it looks like a nice little cut across for guys doing exactly what we're doing. Right. 
So I'm going to hazard a guess that it may well be the next one. Yeah, that looks like it was golf we just passed, so... Yeah, I concur. It's Fox one here. Let's check 132, radio check. Loud and clear. Let's check 132, Roger. Were you trying to call us before? Last year, 132, no, I think, I'm not sure if it was a server split or what, but I heard, heard that I was disconnected, but I can still see you, but uh, uh, I'll just email you about it. Watch out. Didn't catch much of that. He was mumbling. <laughs> Did you get any of that? Um, no. Something about a split. Yeah, it's a minor tactical glitch, I think it sounded like. Oh, I see. Alright, swap into COM 1 for both of us. That's good. And we are on with Tower, and Departure will be next. Okay. Also. Uh, Alright, I'll give them a buzz. San Francisco Tower, Westjet 132, short of runway 1 left at Foxtrot 1. Westjet 132, San Francisco Tower, Frost, runway 1 left, and runway 1 right, runway 28 left, taxi full length. Okay, cross runway one left and one right, then continue taxi for Westjet 132. Okay, we're on the before takeout checklist. Okay. Maybe you was on. One sec, let me actually just get the lights set for this runway cross crossing. And landing lights. Okay, APU is off. I don't, actually don't have the checklist in front of me. Yeah, I've just got like a little Google okay. foo got me one, but uh, it's not not the official one. Uh, okay, so APU is off. Flight controls are checked. Flaps to green lights set. Rudder aileron and stab trimmer set. Cabin door is locked. Takeoff briefing uh, is reviewed. I'm basically going to depart uh, out of here, runway heading, until 6 DME with a left hand turn at 203 to intercept the 151 radial at a point raise. You feel good about that? I concur. Okay. So that you just want to review who's got controls in the event of a failure or emergency or anything like that? I assume you'll be flying, I'll be working the comms, something like that? Yeah, that's correct. I'm basically just. Um, in the unlikely event of an emergency, I have the airplane, you have the comms. Okay. Um, and then SOP for usual stuff. Anything below 80 knots will stop. Anything above 80 knots, unless it's egregious, will uh, continue. Okay. Uh, You're, sorry, do you mean 80, 80 knots or V1? Uh, well, anything below 80 knots will stop. Anything above 80 knots, unless it's catastrophic, will continue. Does that make sense to you? Okay. No, actually, normally. I believe V1, that would be the definition of V1. It says below V1. V1 is the go speed, so if it's below V1 we can and there's room to stop, we should actually be able to stop. Alright. You crazy fixed wing. But guys. if you'd like to, I don't know, maybe in Canada, a little <laughs> more conservative. Maybe Eddie Knots, you're fully committed. Yeah, if you have a metric if we have a metric emergency, you'll be glad I'm here. <laughs> That's right. Maybe you meant uh, Mark Kilometers per hour, I don't know. Off <laughs> the balloons per minute. <laughs> Uh, depends on how many leagues down the runway we are. <laughs> that's right. Uh, okay, so that's the before takeoff to the line. After the line, we're going to set the engine start switches to whatever it is, low ignition. Okay. Uh, lights and strobes uh, on the inboard side are on, or will be on. Yes, I can actually do that now if we like. Sure. So strobes, and you said the inboards. Yeah, so oh, you know what? I was confusing the runway turnoff lights. I apologize with landing lights. So, uh, let me have a look at those landing lights. Sure. So there's basically four of them Inboard there. Airport. Two mm -hmm. of them are fixed, and two of them are retractable. So the two, I believe, on my side are the fixed ones, and your side are the retractable ones. Gotcha. And which one do we want to light them all up, or? Yeah, we we'll might as well light them all up. It's, I'm not paying for light bulbs here. And then uh, any time you want to do set those, you can just click the little bar above them, and it'll push them all forward for you. So oh, nice. Okay. It's kind of neat. Little, little helper there. Um, which is animated nicely. It is. So yeah. are they on or on, on or off right now? They're all on now. On. Okay. 
And I mis I made a mistake anyway. The inboard ones are on your side. The outboard ones are on my side. I see. Anyway. Okay. Um, and the transponder is on, so that's uh, everything done for the before takeoff check, which okay. is nice because we're just coming up to. We are here. Yeah. So for the engine start switches, you said they should be in. Is there a continuous setting, or is it flight? Yeah, I what? believe it's low ignition is the one we're looking for here, which is the continuous on the NG. Got it. Okay, that is set. And at what point? Oh, what point do we move into flight? Um, I think that's. I don't know. If Jackson and Chad, maybe you can chime in. But. Uh, So that's everything. Okay. Looks to me like the plane's ready to go. And right. final is clear. Just let me know when you're ready and I'll call for text. Okay, one thirty two, are ready for departure? Sounds good to me. Alright, you ready? Good. Service goes to West Jet one thirty two, affirmative, short of runway two eight left, ready for takeoff fire file. West Jet one thirty two, runway two eight left, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff from way to right left, Westjet 132. Okay, we're clear for takeoff from way to right left. Okay. Here we go. Did you want me to call any speeds for you, or is the uh, is these? Um, yeah, if you want to call, stuff, call just uh, just V1 at 127, just in case I miss it. Okay. Terrific that I'm not even remotely nervous about this departure. You hand flew the whole thing last time. <laughs> no pressure. Alright. So we're gonna run power up to 97 with the brakes on. Take up power set, here we go. Power uh, set, yep, I can go. Set of right. Gear up. Gear up. Gear is up and locked. Thank you. Climbing like crazy. I would say the puncture watch at one thirty two. So Calvin Archer, Westjet 132, 2000, climbing 5000. Westjet 132, more Cal departure radar contact. Good evening, climb and maintain flight level 290. Good afternoon, and can you repeat the flight level for Westjet 132? Westjet 132, thank you, checked over my own tongue. Climb and maintain flight level 190. Flight level 190, Westjet 132. Okay, looks like we need a slight right turn to join the 281 radial. Okay. And we cleared up to flight level 190. Sounds good. Pitching for about 165. Advise if and when you'd like any flaps retracted. Um, yeah, we'll leave mid for now. Alright. I have no idea what the flap retraction schedule is. It's like is, 220 for 1 and 2. That's crazy. Wow, okay. Yeah. So 3 miles, looking for 6 before we start our left turn to 203. I'm going to get on that radial right at six miles, I'm sure. Okay. Two miles to go. But clear of all obstacles. Okay. And it starts to accelerate. Okay. And I'll let you know when we hit 60 me. Thank you. Fly 
flies so nicely. Six miles set. Okay. Left. left turn to two zero three. Okay, I'll get the nav set up for point raise now. You can bring the flaps up whenever you get heads up. I'll do. Okay, I'll get the flaps going, and when you can, suggest the course, uh, sorry, setting a course in your HSI of 151 for the next intercept. Okay. Yeah, flaps come up. It's a bit of a steep turn. Looking great, nice job. Thank you. Okay, so 150. is going to get set in. 51 set left and pitch up for G20 the climb. Okay, we're coming up on 10,000. I'll run the after 10,000 checklist. I'll check on the cabin pressure. We can exceed 250 now if we like. Okay. Cabin altitude is coming up at 600 feet per minute. Looking for a final cabin altitude at 6,000. So, okay, pressurization looks good. I will lose the landing lights so if you like. Still with me, contact Bakersfield Tower one minute. Okay. Okay, landing lights are off. Taxi one off. And do we still keep the engine in continuous? No, you can turn that off now. Off, okay. Alright, engines are on continuous. Okay, still half line, pitch for T20. Climbing next, restrictions uh, 19 or 0. Wait to intercept the radio. Okay. It's very, uh. It's all very relaxed. Yeah, very sweet. Life is good. And two people um, makes that very different experience <laughs> than it would be otherwise. Yeah, so we're looking for flight level 190. Okay. And I'm anticipating an, uh, the next frequency of 133.7, so I'm going to get that ready. It's amazing, though, before you know it, like I was still sort of in the moment. And you're like, yep, coming through 10 grand. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it is very quick. We're very light, too, Chelsea. I shall 132 contact to open center now, 133.7. Oh. 33.7, good night, Western 132. Oakland Center, Westjet 132, 15,500, climbing, flight level 190. Westjet 132, Oakland Center, good evening, climbing, maintain flight level 350. Flight level 350, Westjet 132. Okay, we're cleared up to 350. Cool, I'm just turning the intercept there, radio there. Well spotted. So we're taking this puppy out to 101. 101 DME. <laughs> That's crazy. It's never going to happen. There's just no way we're going to receive the VR that far, I think. No. Well, that's how I know we're picking some up the other day, like 89. So. Every now and then they're coded in the database correctly. Yeah, I was a little worried about the cabin pressure. They're not, like, not knowing the systems that well. It's like, man, we're climbing. Crazy, I'll keep an eye on the cabin uh, on the pressure differential. I don't know what the next differential is, but um, we shall see. Actually, is it showing a differential? Hmm, we're up to 4,000 feet yeah, on the cabin the altitude. There. That's good. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the, the DP, oh, the differential is shown on the outer ring coming up on 5 inches. Okay, if you want to set um, your altimeters, we're over 18. Yes, standard altimeter coming up. And I am set 2992 on my side. Set, uh, set left. Speed of P is to be plummeting through 200 knots. If you can, actually, if you want to get the autopilot on here at this point, we'll do an IES climb to uh, 350. Okay, IES. Gently engaged, apparently. <laughs> and the, the uh, nav did you want the NAF uh, yeah. VR load mode? Uh, yeah, please. jog there, right? So the nose is going to come down just as we build up some airspeed. I'll get the IAS at moving 300 knots. So. 
Gotcha. I'm gonna get a bird strike from the rear if we go any slower than this. Yes. Alright, so let me just look at the checklist now that I got a chance to read, make sure I didn't miss anything. Alright. Conditioner pressure is set. Just starts to register off. Kinetic gear is up and off. Flaps up. No lights. Altimeter is set. That's it. Okay. I'll set us up for the next intercept. It's going to be Morrow Bay, which we're also never going to go to, but that's all right. 115 course to Morrow Bay, 112.4. Sorry about that. No, problem. I may have I hit the wrong nerve on your side. It may. Can you just verify the autopilot's tracking? Okay. It didn't disengage nope, or anything. No, we can put it in uh, VOR load mode there. Okay, got it. Did all right. That's good to know. It did disengage. Yeah, I accidentally. I'm used to the primary and standby freaks, and I turned uh, the wrong one. Off. Yep, yep. So, so I basically untuned your VOR, and I suspect that that may have taken out the autopilot. Sure. Yeah, that'll work. Benign range of regime of flight here. So. All right, so here we are. Back Fifty miles. The seagull course. restriction doesn't apply to us. Even if it did, we're in good shape. Uh, I'm just gonna roll the power back slightly. I'm gonna set it for about 92. The climb. Okay. Bit of a right turn. I assume that's the airplane just trying to grab that localizer. It is okay. Power is set for climb. Does it take off power all the way through 20,000? It may explain. <laughs> gotcha. Something. Hmm, you know what we can do to identify Cyprus? We could use the crossing, radi crossing radial at Salinas. I might, uh, yeah. if you're okay with that, I might set that up as. Yeah as mine, because I suspect we're going to lose point raise at some point, so sure. 117.3, I'll make my primary right now. Okay. Okay, this way on the RMI. Oh, I see it, yep. Yeah, this way on the RMI, the mm, are they both set to VOR? Both of mine, are you? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, the one that's currently pointing at about a one zero zero heading, that's pointing to Salinas. So when that tail is on two thirty three. Okay, I see that. Yep. That would be uh, Cyprus. I agree. Autopilot shimmying us here a bit. Airspeed looks good, so that's not it. It's just. Grabbing the loc, find airplanes, and simply do that every now and then. Okay, so you want to take just a quick second? We'll look over everything, make sure we're tracking what we need to be tracking. So, no worries. Sorry, what did you want to go about? Uh, I'm just taking a quick look over the panel to make sure I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Untoward. But uh, yeah, gens are working. T's and P's look good, fuel is balanced and correct, leader pressures look good, pressurization is good, power set for the climb, uh, we're in the yellow arc for the N2, we'll have all the power back just slightly, just to the top of that green arc right there, okay, pressures look good, temps look good, okay, just a little sanity check for me there. I don't want to. I'd, be, I'd be pretty gutted if we got halfway there and the stove quit because I had the power too high. <laughs> I'm with you. Climbing pretty slowly. I think Mach 0.72 is the ideal climb rate I was told the other day. So. Is that right? Yeah. Which is strange, so we're only getting 500 feet per minute here, which means it would take us 20 minutes to get up to where we need to be. Yeah, that's a pretty quick climb, being at 300 knots. Let's see, can we set any more climb? Yeah, 
Oh, okay, the M2 was high. I gotcha. Yeah. So maybe I will roll that IAS back a bit. Roll back by about 30 knots and see how the airplane does. That's a pretty low power setting. I wish I knew more about turbine engines to know if we're N2 limited or N1 limited or both. Yeah, I know. And I just, for whatever reason, I'm thinking yellow arc is bad, but... Because this is a, I've looked through some real performance numbers mm -hmm. on the CRJ, and uh, yeah, we'd normally be climbing at 90 plus, I think, on the N1. Oh, that's right, though, because you're in. Yeah, I'm gonna bring that back up because your your values are gonna increase as your altitude increases, right? Right. Because yeah, you see the uh, the NG climbing like 102 percent M1 above whatever altitude, so. We'll get some climb performance back then. All right, looks like we're still receiving 82 miles. Point raise, miraculously. So we've got 20 miles to go, then it's going to be a left turn to 115. Nice. Agreed. And if we lose that, uh, if we lose the primary course guidance, we'll keep the current heading. We can keep the current heading until we get that Salinas crossing radial. Okay. Alright, next frequency is going to be LA Center, 35.5. Just keep us alive till the landing where it all goes pear shaped. <laughs> yeah, look at this rate of climb now, 1800 feet a minute, what a difference. Yeah. And we're still, I mean, we're at 1.71 now, obviously that changes quite a bit as we have a look at that cabin pressure. Yeah, the cabin pres pressure differential is getting up there. Okay. Keep an eye on this. We may have to go for a high cabin altitude than right. 6,000. Yeah. Make everybody sleepy. I'm going to push the attendant button. <laughs> See how much have we got to go? We've got another six thousand feet to go. Yeah, I'm not wild about the pressure differential. You mind if I set the cabin altitude to about uh, seven thousand? Yeah. Yeah, I think it. What is it on a on a modern jetliner? I, I think, think it's. Right, I think it's around eight, isn't it? Yeah. But they pressurized to eight. The Concorde was unique because it used the pressurized to four. Oh, really? Which was ridiculous because it was up at flight level six zero zero one. Jeez. Well, that was the big thing with the um, the new seven eight seven that Air Canada has purchased. And they said, well, you know, we only pressurize our cabin up to six thousand feet for passenger comfort. I don't think oh, most people realize that that's always been an option. <laughs> right. All right, so ninety seven miles and holding. I think it's going to make a liar out of me. That's amazing. It's going to hold the whole way then. If we haven't lost it already, so we have a uh, we do have a turn coming up shortly, and that is checked on the RMI too. Looking for 233, and we're at about 235 on the tail of that RMI. I don't know if you see it or not. So it's just about yeah, time to I turn. I would say that's 235, and you can just throw it into heading mode whenever you want to make the turn. Okay, heading engage. I hope. Nope, that didn't do it. Uh, down for any mode, yeah. Ah, I cannot see this thing properly. I have to move my head. This is exhausting. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> I have just beat. I just wanted to ruin that one crossing for you. Okay, so we're done with... Uh, Alright, so we're ready to do 112.4 tomorrow. I agree. Uh, so, so 295 radio. Yep, 115 for the course. Yeah. And 112.4. Four coming at you. And you go back to nav mode whenever you're ready. Yes, sir. Fewer things would make me happier. <laughs> and climb is looking nice. We're still getting a thousand feet a minute. It's duskish. Not bad. Nice little hue on the horizon. A giant fiery ball of doom is reflecting that sun off my panel here. Sparks. <laughs> Cabin altitude is settling in at about uh, 7,000, and 
differential pressure, 7 psi, just below the yellow. Such a nice little pail. Game face there, Chris, let's go. Yeah, I do see that this pressure differential there. And it looks like it's pressurizing, though, appropriately. Oh well, yeah, if it wasn't pressurizing, we'd know about it by now. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's at 7,000 now, right? It looks like it. So if I had commanded 6,000, that would be... You know, it may have been able to do it. Because... Well... I mean, there's still some <laughs> differential in reserve. Right. So we got a little bit left before we hit the yellow. There's 15 minutes of oxygen for every passenger in the back. That's awesome. Just the 2478 Center Marbury departure, uh, Roger. Reasonable navigation and maintain appropriate VFR altitude. Okay, so we're going to Okay, now before we get too relaxed, uh, are, we, What's your destination? are we getting DME? No. no. In fact, are we receiving this puppy at all? Uh, Roger, thanks. Let's be honest, 112.4. I'm seeing a from indication. One second. About a thousand to go. Okay, I got 112.4 on both the navs. That is Morrow Bay. Yeah. And, yeah, we're not receiving it, so... Okay, so let's go to heading mode. As far as I can tell. Well, are you are you receiving? No. Well, I'm not getting a DME off it, so... I'm also getting a flag, too, so... Okay. Uh, okay, heading mode it is. And do you have a heading set of 115 on I your do. side? I do. Okay. Uh, Heading mode it is then. So you can just roll the mode off from VR load to man. Oh yeah, that would work. That's an easy way of doing it. Perfect. So we're back into heading mode. And you and may have to run that tab down again. I can't tell if the switch position is correct. No, it's not. So if you want to push this switch down to heading select. Perfect. And now you'll see the, the green enunciator in front of you is now alive. Got it. And we should probably okay. tell three five. Yeah, let's tell center we're dead reckoning to McKee then. Oakland Center, WestJet 132. WestJet 132, WestJet 132, not receiving Morrow Bay, we can dead reckon out to McKee on the offshore 7 if you like. Uh, WestJet 132, thanks for the heads, uh, fly heading, uh, let's call it, uh, 115 and direct Morrow Bay whenever. Okay, heading 115, uh, we're actually not going to be going to Morrow Bay, the, uh, it'll be McKee and then the Santa Catalina transition. I think I stepped on you there, I corrected myself, I did not want you direct to Morrow Bay. Fly heading uh, uh, 115 and uh, join the departure label. Okay, 115 and then we'll resume the departure when we can, we'll advise you when that is for WestJet 132. Appreciate it, thanks. Okay, so I've had to come off the power, just to keep us off the barber pole there. Uh, like the Fantastic. Alright, so we're to fly this heading until we're receiving... Okay, in that case, we don't really care so much about Morro Bay. It's more likely that we're going to care about... Honestly, it could go either way. Let's get ready to track both. Um, I'm trying to decide whether we should try and pick up yeah, Morro Bay the or Big, Big Sur. Sur. I guess we'll just yeah. do both. Uh, should we do Morro Bay on your side, since that's what we... Okay. I'm going to be tracking first. So, yeah. alright, 112.4, you can let me know if that comes alive. Hello? That is already set, and I will set Big Sur next, 114.0. I'll make that primary. Can we call Mike and the Good evening, okay, gentlemen. Big Sur, and you'll stand by, so zero. we're ready. So now I'll take that now. Okay, Big Sur is primary for me. Okay, I just saw the ADF flip, so that's good. It would, I don't know if we're receiving anything at this point. None of the DMEs are... Oh, no, I stand corrected. I have. I do have one of my DMEs. That would be Big Sur, most 14 likely. 14 for Big Sur. Okay, so I'm going to set off course Mike to 131. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, we're on a 115 heading. At some point, one of two things is going to happen. We're either going to hit the Morro Bay radial prior to McKee, okay. or we'll never pick up Morro Bay in time. Right. We'll just dead reckon until Shall we hit the Big Sur radial. Right. You're set up for Morrow Bay on your side, I'm set up for Big Sur 
and the 131 radial online. So okay. at some point, next heading is going to be 131, but we're assigned a 115 heading for now. Okay, and I'm going to leave the autopilot heading select as it is because we're using heading mode. I can go. Okay. And I'm going to leave less course as is. And can 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 you if you look at your departure there, would you agree with me? That, um, Absolutely. Good. Oh, okay, so, so we're. Uh, no. <laughs> so it's settled um, then. <laughs> yeah. But it, we're not seeing a distance. As much as it kind of looks like that on the departure, there's, it's not showing us the distance between Big Sur and McKee, right? It's just showing us the it leg between 49. Cyprus and McKee is 49. Uh, the Now the angle of that leg. Oh, no, it's 86, right? Between. Yeah, it's 86 from Cyprus to McKee. It's kind of a long leg. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at 49 DME off of Big Sur. And we're currently at 19. Also, this is where the RMI is beautiful. Gives you a good idea of where we are relative to Big Sur. Oh, it's so helpful, right, for SA. It's good. Just takes a while to read the darn thing. So we're currently passing through the 210. I agree. And that should be... I'm trying to visualize here. No. The Big Sur is at... Um, 30. Yeah, that sounds right. 330 and 150 should be. Big Sur is like over our left shoulder as opposed to off the 9 o'clock. It is. Okay, why is my RMI not pointing at it? Hmm. Yours, it, yours is on my end. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, it's the big needle? No, something is amiss. One second. Oh, okay. I'm tracking... Okay, you're, who's tracking what? One second. Look here. I got myself confused. Okay, Big Sur. I'm tracking Big Sur. You're tracking in Morro Bay. I think my RMI might be confused. Let me see if it looks identical to yours. It does. Okay. My AD, my RMI is reversed right now. That's why I'm confused. Yeah, okay. That might be a, a buzz. Oh, no it isn't. It's not a bug. It's not a bug. Question I'm 132, do you prefer we can get you a vector to uh, Never. intercept the uh, Big Sur 131 radial? Question 132 negative, we're actually just getting course guidance off of Big Sur now, so we'll be able to join the departure just coming up on the key here. Outstanding, thanks. Okay, so we've got about two, three minutes until we intercept that. Do we want it? Uh -huh. uh, I'm... it's looking like it might be less than that. If you check out my HSI, I'll let you know when it's coming up. We're, we're about half deflection on my HSI right now. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do is roll my course indicator. It's a 131, and I'll swap you over to Big Sur. Thank you. You are swapped. Let's see. 131 course, and intercepts. Just for my own amusement, want, can we go to V? Go ahead. You want, would you like nav mode? Yeah, I just I want to see how it intercepts. I honestly don't think I've done a an intercept like this in the set three. Oh, it's good to see how Big Sur came alive, or Morro Bay came alive, and then oh, we're here. This is weird though on the DME, isn't it? What DME are you showing here? We're all on the same thing, so yeah, it's only throwing a thirty-six. Yeah. I don't know what that forty-nine is to be honest. I don't think it's Big Sur to McKee. I can double check it. In. Apparently not, because yeah. we're only at seven. I'm going to ask the guy. I'm going to ask him where we are relative to McKee. So now WestJet 132, do you show us in the vicinity of McKee right now, or are we pretty far away from it? Uh, WestJet 132 showing you approximately uh, one, one four miles from McKee. WestJet 132, and, and where are we relative to it? North, south, east, or west of McKee? Wish that 132 is broken, shake it. Are uh, we are north, south, east, or west of McKee? Southeast. Okay, good talk. Yeah, I agree. I just checked on Sky Vector. Big Sur is 49 miles from McKee. 
So something happened without a dead reckoning like that. I think we ended up north of it. It's going to be fun to watch on PE oil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because our DME was... Hang on, we've just lost Big Sur now. This is awesome. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so let me write that down. That's a that's something we got to get fixed, Big Sur. 45 DME, we lose them. Well, the good news is we were on course. Okay, so I have no minutes. DME, but I still have... I have no flag either, so we're still tracking the radio. You're right. Next thing to go, though, is going to be the flag. We're going to lose There it is. There's there the is. flag. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Right on time. Okay, okay, so put us in the heading mode just before... Let me put the uh, heading to 131. You can put us in heading okay. mode. Heading mode is... Actually, I think I may have... Oh, I got you. Okay. Set. Thank you. Okay, now let's figure out what we want to do. Well, I'm going to tell them we've... We can tell them we've lost it. We could hold this until we hit the Santa Catalina 287. Yeah. Assuming we're receiving it. I'll... Let me get ready to see if we're receiving that. Yeah. <sighs> 111.4 on my side. And, Done. And, and if you can flip Morro Bay onto my side, I just want to take a look. You want more about it? On my side, yeah. 224. Just gonna take a look. Okay. Just for giggles? Yeah. No problem. Begin giggling. 1124 is set. Alright, Santa Catalina. 107. Oh, I'm receiving. We're pretty close to it. That needle swings fast. We're 14 miles from it. On one zero zero from us, so we're definitely south of Big Sur. Not that I don't think that was ever in contention. Yeah, that was never a. Uh, I showed us at about thirty nine or forty DME from Big Sur when we when we eventually joined the Big Sur radial, yeah. and it was increasing. So I think we were west northwest of McKee, and then yeah, right as I we hit McKee, that. right as we hit McKee, we then lost it. Yeah. So we are now on that leg from McKee. In theory, if we start at a timer, roughly. Let's see, it's 8, I got 8, 12, no sorry, 8.07. How do you read me? at 1.32, this is the first call bank we're getting from you now. Wish at 1.32, yeah, sorry, I was too happy having a bit of a bit of a network issue for me. Uh, contact the Los Angeles Center 135.5. 35.5, Wish at 132. Alright, let's, let's tell... LA Center about our good news. Yes. Los Angeles Center WestJet 132, flight level 350 request. Jet 132, Los Angeles Center. Good evening, Westjet 132. We're uh, no longer receiving Big Sur. It is a known issue. We'll get it looked at. But uh, if we could get a vector to join the Santa Catalina 287 radial, I can advise when we're receiving Santa Catalina, but we're not yet. Oakland Center, Westjet 132, radio check. Westjet 132, radio check. Okay, thanks. Uh, we're not receiving uh, Big Sur. Request a vector, or we can just keep present heading to join the uh, Santa Catalina 287 radio.
improving your 85 miles of pass rate. So. I agree. Uh, we can curve WestJet 132. We we work. We need Big Sur for course guidance till Daisy, and we're no longer receiving Big Sur on the offshore seven departure. Request uh, can we do present heading until we join the Santa Catalina 287? Chris, are you getting a... Yeah, I'm dealing with the overspeed. There we go. Okay. That was awesome. <laughs> it's a good thing it didn't go on for like the entire... Oh, wait, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Sabotage is my radio Just when you hadn't had enough of the Bell 407 rotor warning. <laughs> exactly. Where do you change the audio again? Is it under op? Yeah, op. There we go. Internal sound. Is he Bennett at 11, Westjet 132. Is he rather quiet for you? Yeah. Okay. Let's make sure. Okay. Alright, so Bennett's a ways away. Bennett at 11, yep. It's 100 miles from Daisy. Okay, he had said we were 88 miles from Big Sur. Right. That means we got about 50 miles to go. Yeah, I agree. And we're doing. Uh, around 480 over the ground, yep. roughly, which is S eight miles a minute. Yeah. And how many did we say we had? 50 another miles. 50. Five zero. 50. So divided by eight, be <laughs> about another six minutes. Yeah. Okay. That's six minutes from now. Time now. 807. 807. 812. 812. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Good call. Intercept so invalid eight. if not uh, established <laughs> yeah. by. Okay, so about 2018, we should be looking for Daisy. Where's Siri when you need her? Siri, how far am I from Big Sur? <laughs> Siri. Look at 3G up here. <sighs> yeah, it was weird. When we made that turn to intercept the 131 radial there, I, uh, I noticed that the speed had come back quite a bit. So I just set the, I changed the power setting and you know, to bring it back up to where it was. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, rover speed. So at this altitude, we've got two hours of fuel. Just took a look at that one. Doing other things. Mm -hmm. I was going to have a look at our top of descent roughly. Okay, so I'm tracking Big Sur. You're still tracking. I'm oh, sorry, I'm tracking. Attempting to track Santa Catalina. You're attempting to track Morro Bay. Right. Gotcha. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, I'm going to track it. And the next heading is going to be 107. We know that. What heading are you flying at the moment? Uh, oh, the one, the tree one. Beautiful. This is nerve wracking. <laughs> Dead wrecking the whole thing. Um, okay, so Santa Catalina also want to look at the VOR information for that guy. Okay, we're about to cross the coast. So, is that right? Yeah. Oh. Just looking at sky vector, that means we're getting very close to Daisy then. One, two. Yeah, we're estimating at about four minutes to Daisy. I'm going to see if that sounds... Oh, hold the phone. One of my RMIs just swung. Well, that means we just lost Morro Bay. Great. <laughs> All right, All right. Good. I'm yeah. going to ask him. I'm going to just tell him we've, we've got about three minutes or so to Daisy, roughly, by yeah. dead reckoning, and see if we're close. 
Centre West Jet 132. By our calculations, we've got about three minutes to go to Daisy. Does that look about right to you? Thank you. Cool. Okay. And I'm actually up here at 35,000 feet, which just taking a very nice look at Santa Barbara, which is off the left wing. So the next turn is going to be 2107. That's assuming we can pick up Indeed. Santa Catalina 100 miles away. Yes. Which I think is a pretty safe bet we're not going to be able to. Yeah. But we've got about two minutes to go. Well, you wouldn't want the cruise to be boring, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I see some traffic there just moving along the coast. That's cool. I think I see the Channel Islands out there. There is an F-18 that rips up the warning area just west of Santa Catalina. <laughs> nice. Single ship. I remember recording that drone going, I'm pretty sure no one's ever going to see this airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't let it stop me. All right. Uh, I've probably got about 45 seconds to go. Hang on, he said we're only two minutes away from... Sorry, he said we we're 15 miles originally from Daisy? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing eight miles a minute, so we're probably past Daisy at this point. Alright. You want me to run the turn? Uh, I would suggest it. I'm going to advise on what we're doing. Center West at 132. By our timing, we're probably past Daisy. Still not receiving Santa Catalina. We're turning to a 107 heading until we receive it. Set 122, uh, fly heading uh, 107 and uh, direct Santa Catalina when able. Okay, 107, direct Santa Catalina when able. Uh, in that case, did you still want the Bennett restriction? Do you want us to join the 287 inbound to make Bennett? No, I said 122, I was about to give that to you. Uh, actually, based on where you are right now, the descent and maintain is 1-1000 this time, and it's worked out pretty close. Okay, I'll descend and maintain 1-1000, West Jet 132. Down to 11. Okay. Okay, sir, I got you dialed well, in for... You're all set up for Santa Catalina on your receiver. And we are just direct when able at this point. Okay. And 1-1000. One, one you want me to set that then for the altitude? Please. Let's see, familiar voice. Let's see, familiar voice. Sounds like a handsome fella. <laughs> All right. So would that be IS one, mode? One, and then just dial the power back. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, IS mode selected. Okay, power's going back. Plummet and maintain one one thousand. Yeah, you certainly do in this thing. It's tough to plan the descent. And you don't have any. We don't know where you are. Yeah, yeah. But it's seventy six miles to. Bennett, so we got to lose 24,000 feet times three is 75. nearly 75. So I can see why he said he was looking at it going, Yeah, it's about time for you to start descending. Yeah, so. near enough run these guys back to idle 2,000 feet per minute set there. Lovely, ladies and gentlemen, it's your cabin crew speaking. Started our descent to John Wayne. Local time in John Wayne is 8.20.
Temperature's 22. Slight winds out of the west. Southwest. Nice fly west, yeah. Nice fly west, yeah. That was my best Realize. cabin crew announcement. Like, <laughs> we could do this 50 times. I don't think we ever had to do that take again. <laughs> We realize you have no choice of aircraft, one, uh, of airlines, <laughs> when it comes to flying the 737-200. That's right. Therefore, you're stuck with WestJet. Great engines, terrible nav equipment. <laughs> that's right. We, we have to know where we are for the last 26 miles, uh -huh. and even that's a guess. You will see a coast off the left wing. That's right. Not sure which one. Left. You've got uh, Santa Barbara people off the right. We hate you. You've got just open... <laughs> yeah. We hate the people on the right. <laughs> Love it. This is such a good time. God, I wish I knew where we are, where we were. That's the only thing that's bothering me. So yeah, I mean, we're running parallel to the coast, right? I mean, we know where we are, we just don't know exactly yeah. where we are. You know what this is? This is Heisenberg Airways. <laughs> we're uncertain of where we are. I can tell you how fast we're going, I can't tell you where we are. I think we're... We're flying away from where we want to be, I think. Like, I'm not happy with this heading, but... Really? Yeah. In what way? Well, I've, I've lost the coast off the left wing. Like, are we supposed to be that far That's away normal, from... That's yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We are of open one. It is supposed to be a 107 course to Santa Catalina. And let's be honest, Santa Catalina is in the middle of the ocean. Uh, yeah, I guess. Right. So this was always on the cards. Okay, yeah, I see that on the map now. Like, I almost feel bad about using electronic charts at this point. Like, I feel like because we're flying this steam-driven beast that I should have, like, the unfolding maps and stuff right now. <laughs> right. Okay, so I've got the power all the way off, trying to hold that 2,000 foot per minute descent rate, but I can't quite get there. Raj. Good news for the cabin pressure differential, though. Yeah. It's starting to come down. Good stuff blow this thing open like a pop cam when we open the door. <laughs> Ideal. Still not receiving this puppy. <laughs> Thanks so much, x -Plan. So one of the lads just fired in the chat some navigational hint. It's you guys are dead. <laughs> oh, there's more. On. For <laughs> <later. laughs> Sorry, I got... I got to say, screw you, Chris ATC. <laughs> You try doing this. So uh -huh. we're sitting here dead reckoning, and three out of four times I read the time wrong. I'm like, so it's 9.30. And you're like, actually, it's 8.17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is 8.17. <laughs> Let's see Like, we're literally sitting here, Keith, in the dark, with the engines at idle. How's like, our just, fuel, dare I ask? <laughs> oh, we're laughing. Fuel yeah. Tapping it, yeah. It's weird. So we don't know where we are, it's getting dark. Yeah. There's a record number of sharks in this ocean, <laughs> from what I understand. The fuel gauge is unbearably low. Mm. Uh, we're plumbing it out at 26. It's lovely. This is what flying should all be about. It's great fun. These class. Oh, look at this. I'm slightly crushed that we just started receiving Santa Catalina. Yeah, it's a little... Look yeah. at that. It's not too bad. Not too shabby. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Looks like about a 109 heading is going to get us there. That's good. Don't Let me know when you want to view our mode. Do you want to run um, the radio in? Or do you want to just go direct to... He said direct one able, so okay. technically we should... Yeah. So you can go, go to our mode. Meow. Nav mode engaged. All right. We know that we are on the 109 course. We were slightly north of our yeah. track. And I was thinking we were on the other side of that. I did. That could be the wind. Last time we dead reckoned, you know what? The uh, wind's probably out of the yeah. southwest because last time we dead reckoned, I'm pretty sure we ended up 10 miles north of McKee. Um, I cannot wait to look at that on the uh, on PEOA. Mm -hmm. uh, but good news, we still have no DME. Right. So. Ah, I just came. There oh. it is. So the magic number is 45, right? That tells you that in the file, if you were to go look at Santa Catalina, yeah, it's that's good for the 45 miles generator. and nothing else, which is complete bull. All right, very good. We're receiving. Good stuff. So let's take a look at the descent then. We are 13,000 to go. 
years. And we need to be in Bennett in 15 miles? Uh, we actually don't. He just told us to descend yeah, okay. and maintain 1 1000, so... Okay. We care not about um, Bennett anymore. Well, still, I mean, we're going to be one no, not above 11 at Santa Catalina. That's pretty darn close to John Wayne. That is true. So, I'm going to break the... Pull the way to idle if you want. Oh, you know, we are. Oh, we are? Yeah, so I'm going to break This is it, huh? I'm going to break the what cardinal. About a, what about a faster descent? Uh, just faster speed? Yeah, that'll get us down there. It's true. Come on, man. I know. This is like the speed break <laughs> I know. I was uh, my hand was it. on it. I'm sure if I watch the stream again, I could see it just start to move a little bit. Yep. Ooh, giving us an extra forty knots was probably a bit much. Look at this. Now look at us plummeting. We're at fifty-five hundred feet a minute. Ooh, okay. Okay. The, Sorry, passengers. Sorry. Now that oh, it's pitches out again. Oh, the cabin size of fifteen hundred feet a minute. Uh. <laughs> I know. I saw it. Well, I moved it like forty knots. I mean. Yeah. That's probably what'll happen. We so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna run the uh, IAS just like I do in the King Air. Or in okay. the uh, dash. Ah, uh, I see. We're in a spirited descent out of flight level two, sir, sir. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna sort itself out here. This should give us two thousand feet per minute at least. It's dark out there. <laughs> Jeez. Sharks are hungry. Cat's actually heckling us from his airplane. That's awesome. All oh, one of him in that airplane? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twice as many people flying this airplane. It's amazing. <laughs> Actually, good for Cat, man. If he's running this thing single pilot, that's a lot of work. Or maybe I've just gotten accustomed to doing it with you. Cat has told me he's not a big fan of the math. So, assuming he's got the same VR limitations we have, he's going to be hurt <laughs> right now. I didn't bring enough fuel. I set one to do two contact Los Angeles. Or correct me, contact SoCal approach 25.2. 25.2, uh, WestJet 132. So, yeah, I'm just using the IAS to. So Cal approach, WestJet 132, flight level 180, descending 11,000. WestJet 132, so Cal approach, Los Angeles altimeter 2982, departure to Santa Catalina, VOR heading 030, effective for the airport, and to maintain 7,000. 030 out of Santa Catalina, down to 7,000, and can you repeat the altimeter for WestJet 132? WestJet 132, uh, Los Angeles altimeter 2982. 82s, WestJet 132. That's good, that saved us like 70 feet. <laughs> okay, so we're heading down to eight. This correction, seven. Okay. And I was just doing the math. And at three minutes, we're going to lose 6,000 feet, and they'll get us at 10 at Santa Catalina. All right. 10,000 feet. But we got to level off, so I'm actually... At 10, yeah. Correct. Yeah. He, there is genuinely no rush, man. We got uh, from Santa Catalina to John Wayne is a pretty good distance anyway. Cool. So I, I wouldn't kill us. Oh, yeah, because we got a dog like really around because we're going to land one nine. That's right. Yep. So uh, let's see. Verify 2982 on your side. For the 2982 set left. And set right. And 070 will be our next heading. Okay. Departing Santa Catalina. So all we got right now is level off at 10 to bleed some speed. That's right. Do you want me to actually set the altitude to 10,000 so it does no. the level off for us? At like 10.5, I'll roll the IAS back to 240 and it should level us off by 10. Oh, uh, you got it. You got it. Correct. Because friends don't let friends deploy the speed brakes. <laughs> My, My next t-shirt will say that. So can approach Boeing 717, Tango Sierra, 1 1000, John Wayne Weather. Boeing 717, Tango Sierra, so Cal approach. Good evening, and thank you. Descend to maintain 7000. 7000, San Diego Sierra.
All right. Let's see. We're on 25.2. I'm anticipating 27.2 for the next freak. Right now, we're 60 seconds from Santa Catalina. And 12. Looking for 10.5 to level off. Okay. And then it'll be 0, 0.70 0 out of here. Okay. So you can flip the, the heading is set. You can flip heading mode whenever you want. I'm just going to worry about the descent profile. Okay. Heading mode is on. Um, heads down, setting up for some freaks. I'll put tower in the con two, so we can swap to that at any time. Okay, and as predicted, that's leveling us off. So the airspeed comes off. It's beautiful. And for future reference, that actually happened within 250 feet at 300 knots, so it's pretty quick when you're on the IAS back. Okay, cool. So a little empty field myopia there, that was strange. Like, I had to look to make sure the clock was running, I got all disoriented for a second. I looked <laughs> off the wing and looked back in, I thought we were in a turn, but we weren't. No, nice. no, no discernible horizon, right? You're right. Just another way to die in the 732. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for flying, WestJet. Ding! <laughs> Alright, I'm pulling up the ILS-19 right in case we need it to get okay. some freaks ready for that. Should be 11175 with a course of 19 or 4. WestJet yeah. 132, contact SoCal approach 127.2. 27.2, WestJet 132. So Cal Perch, West Jet 132. 10,500, descending 7,000, negative at us. West Jet 132, So Cal Perch, good evening. John Wayne, altimeters 2981, winds 210 at 5, visibility is 10 miles, and clear skies. Plan visual approach, only 19 right. Okay, plan for the visual 19 right, altimeter 2981, West Jet 132. Alright, it's another 10 feet. Mm. Heading is 030. It's too much. Sorry about that, heading 030, zero, zero, WestJet 132. Okay, 030 zero, zero on the turn, Chris. 030, zero, zero, set. I'm going to try and dim some of this panel lighting here. Okay, I'm planning for the visual 19 right, and I'll back it up with the localizer. Okay, through 10 if you can get the lights whenever you're ready. Okay, 111.75. Okay, are you all done with Santa Catalina? Would you like to localize now? That'd be great. Okay. Localize is set. And so we can set a course of 194 when we're ready. I'll get the landing lights for you. So heading should still remain what it is, but the course could be 194. Okay. Lit up like our Christmas tree. Good stuff. Course 191. And I shall set the localizer also. I'll tell you what, I'll put 115.7 on my nav, which will be Seal Beach, so we can have some SA as to where we are relative to that. Stuff. And our RMI should be telling us that. Looks like that Seal Beach is off of our 10 o'clock. Scene. Westjet 132, descend and maintain 4,000. Out of 8.1 for 4, Westjet 132. Okay, down to 4,000. You know what, I'm going to check something, but I think there's a good chance that I'm not the guy who's supposed to be setting the autopilot um, altitudes. I think that's part that's considered part of flying the plane, but I'll double check on that. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get us below 220 so I can start getting some flaps in here. Okay. We have to get vector. Oh, I'm sorry, we're doing the visual. You actually, I, I can go. That'd be a good idea. Let's just make sure our descent rate is still there, though. Feasible. Oh, yeah. It'll get us there. It'll get us there. 10 knots, 12 knots to bleed. Yes. I got some freeways out there ahead of us. Yeah, start, the world's starting to light up on us, eh? I'm actually really stoked that we're doing this at night. Good God, man. We might actually make it. Well, <laughs> yeah. I think, Dude, I think I got the beacon. Here, contact SoCal approach, 127.2. You see the beacon at 1 o'clock? 
Yeah. Got a green and white beacon at my one o'clock. So call approach point seven one seven yeah. Tango Sierra. Seven thousand feet with the John Wayne My machine is just struggling. Forty seven one seven Tango Sierra. So call approach. Roger is plan uh, visual approach away one and right. Visual one minute right, seven Tango Sierra. It's starting to draw all these lights on me. Mm-hmm. Alright, so you give me flaps two. Flaps two. And flaps to set. Scene. Okay, so let's run just in my head here. Seven, pro three, two, John Wayne Airport's one o'clock, one zero miles. Report when you have it set. Got the field in sight, Westjet 132. Westjet 132, cleared visual approach, runway 1 and a right and a right downwind. Cleared visual 19 right with right downwind, Westjet 132. Okay, good stuff. So, um, let's get the engine start switches to low ignition. You got it, sir. Low ignition for one and two. Okay, set. And verify you have. Do you have the field also? Or just I have the field. Yeah. You do? Okay. And let's get. Um, Boeing seven one seven Tango Sierra, turn right heading zero four zero back to the engine. So hoping this would slow us down a bit more. Uh, below 210, we can go to flaps 10. So you can go to flaps 10 now. I'm sorry, that was a little broken. Fly heading 040 vectors for the visual approach. That should slow us down nicely there. Yep. Congratulations, you're now the proud owner of our grand piano. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yep. Flaps 10 set. Zero four zero vectors visual seven mega zero. I am going to hand fly this. So is that need some sort of a threat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a warning. It's more <laughs> what it is. Actually, you I know, just go ahead and bail out. Yeah. Uh, just want to say good luck. Brace, brace, brace. Once we get midfield, I'll take it. I'll just okay. need you to call the turn. Red three eight one two Quebec Los Angeles Center. Good evening, Squawk six five Let's see. seven six uh, Bakersfield Altimeter two nine seven. Let me know when you want Bakersfield. the auto break and. Oh yeah, we can. We'll on. set the auto break here to medium. Okay. Yeah, it's okay to do that now. Is it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Medium is set. And we don't want to arm the spoilers yet, I assume. I also don't know how to do that, so... They basically just come up. back slightly, and you'll see a green light, which I'm pushing on my side. Number 717, Tango Sierra. Ah, fuel gauges, that one will come on, telling you it's our... Yeah, the fuel gauges, okay, gotcha. Okay, we level at four. Once the autopilot stops trimming me, I'll take it. I'll let you know. Hang on a minute, I've lost my SA as to whether... Number 3812, so. back. I prefer to radar ID you first. Maintain the VFR for now. Uh, have you radar okay, contact gotcha. one five miles north of Shafter? So that would be. Uh, say altitude Go. and request. Yeah. Okay, let's keep. Uh, I'll keep my eyes open for this field here. Okay, we're just uh, coming up a beam midfield. Okay. Uh, you give me the airplane. Okay. Uh, Disengaging. I'm on a pilot. Do you want flight director off also? Uh, I'm sure. Okay, flight director's killed. It's all yours. Okay, so field altitude. It's going to be sea level essentially. Close enough to it. We may want to uh, square okay, up the downwind. Okay. Verify aircraft type We're basically just going to come left a bit here. You let me know when. I think so, yeah. About a zero one zero heading should square us up. Otherwise, it's going to be a very tight turn final. Okay. How long do you think that base turn is? Second. How long do you think that base turn is going to be? Uh, it's Baron, one, two, back, right about a mile right now. Oh, okay. And in terms of how wide Westhead the base is? Yeah. Yeah. Contact John yeah. Tower, one, two, six, point eight. Twenty-six eight Westjet one thirty-two. Yeah, we're about a mile. It'll be about a one mile base. Okay. Twenty seven one seven Tango Sierra to Cinnamon Tank three thousand John Wayne Airport. Okay, to the town. Two o'clock in the morning. Got three thousand. Then we have to build the site. Seven Tango Sierra. John Tower Westjet one thirty-two. Visual nineteen right. Westjet 132, John went out, remember 1 minute right, clear to land. Clear to land, 19 right, Westjet 132. Okay, we are clear to land. Okay, so flaps 15. Flaps 15. 
No, oh, that changes the pitch, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to lose reference to the field pretty soon. Okay. We'll turn, uh, we'll call it 12 DME, we'll turn. I mean, that's a huge turn, but we're in a 737, so. Yeah, lane 735 uniform, San Louis Tower, I'm a 2 9 clear for takeoff. If you're waiting for 12 DME, it could be some time. Yeah. Oh, are you are using the localizer? Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's five miles. I you're gonna go I'm going another 60 seconds out here. Once I hit the highway, I'll turn. Gotcha. And just advise when you like the gear, no rush. Yeah. There's 3,000 feet. Eight miles, it's three minutes, you almost start the turn. Okay. And we do have the localizer backing this up on this one. Okay. And if you think I should straighten it out on the uh, base leg here, you let me know. But the plan is just to be a, a circular. Gotcha. Maybe shoot for about a 45 and see what we see. Look, maybe then just back up with localized patches. Sure. You can give me flaps 20. Flaps 20. Uh, actually, 25, I guess. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we can go for something relatively square. I think we do have a bit of time to go. Yeah. Looking out the right wing. All right, I, I got the field. It's about 2 o'clock. I don't know if you see a dog leg in the freeway just off to our right, but it's just... Uh, uh, okay, it's just yeah, I get the, the field now. Very good. It's like, it's very busy. Yeah, you, you got us nice and slow for the base turn. That gave us lots of time. That yeah. was good. Yeah, I can almost pick the speed up just slightly here. All right. I'm just going to hazard a guess, but at some point the wheels might want to move from their current <laughs> position. You got it. There's the marker. We can put the gears down, which is obviously what I was waiting for. So oh, it no wasn't question. your cue. No. 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 God, no. no. All right, gears coming down. Thank you. Get the power back in. John Wayne Tower, Boeing something with the spoilers on for the currently not spoiled arm. Would you like that arm? Yes, please. Boeing 717 Tango. God, I hope that's what I just did. Yeah. See a green light there. Yep, speed break on. Fantastic. Right yeah. Overshot the center line and I'm above the glide slope. But that's easy to okay. We're at flaps 25. There's still one more in yep. the Give hole. Give me 30, please. Trim, 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 trim. I hate, hate, hate overshooting the turn for final. It just is. It is my version of your speed brakes. I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everybody's got something. I just call it Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got something that gets their goat, right? I guess everyone's passionate about that. About something. So I can set up the cabin for landing here. Might I try dimming the lights? Is that yeah, an option? Yeah, you can go for it. That's By fine. dimming, I mean completely turning them off. That's kind of pretty. Yeah. Yeah, woe is to he who thinks this is not a nice looking uh, setup. This is nice. So, um, gears down, three green, flaps 30, we cleared the land. We all cleared the land. Um, I've got the reversers on landing, and you can just let me know when you take the auto brakes off at 70, but you can take them off on your own initiative. Oh, We're in the SH3 for Quebec, San Luis Town. Enter left base from between the room, between the for the land. And there's three, four, Quebec, roll my canal, cuddle land. And your F's gonna be 122, we'll land at 127 if I can make this work. Watch out. Some deviation on that glide slope there. Get it back. Nope.
slightly left of course. Okay, correcting. You're gonna crash. <laughs> Nothing is illuminating the runway. Wonderful. Not so much. Yeah. yeah, those landing lights don't really do much other than tell the people where you're at. Oh, there they are. Good. <laughs> Confirm where we touched down. All right. Speed. Yep. Reverses are unlocked. They're coming up. And there's 70 knots. Auto brakes coming off. Okay. Manual braking. Can you give me the taxi lights? Sure. Do Thank you for purchasing. Yep. There they are. Okay. Good. Oh, what a what an enormous difference. Yep. <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> I see we've gone with the twenty watt bulb option <laughs> here at WestJet. Yeah. And I saved them all that money by not using the speed brakes. We want to exit left or right here. It's going to be a left. Left on Delta, we'll plan for Delta and Alpha. The ground's going to be 120.8. Let's get 132, contact ground 120.8, good day. 120.8, WestJet 132. Alright. 120.8, set. And over to calm. Two. Both on com two. Job and ground. Good evening, Westjet one thirty two. Clear of nineteen. Right on Delta. Westjet one thirty two. Job and ground. Good evening. Text to terminal ramp via Alpha. Good night. Ramp via Alpha. Good night, Westjet one thirty two. Okay, straight ahead, and there's can't landing. They're on nineteen, right? Nice. All right, managed to get us on Alpha already. But... Gotcha. Well, Delta's extremely short, so you're in good shape. And there he is, touching down. Beautiful. That was beautiful timing. Yeah, nice stuff. All right, post landing. You want uh, anything cleaned up? Um, yeah, let's clean up the flaps. Good uh, idea. That way we don't think we're hijacked. That's right. Yeah, uh, flaps. So the speed brakes are up. Auto brake is off. You can get the AP running. Okay, auto brake is off, and speed brakes are stowed. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, and APU coming on. Yeah. Here on WestJet, I like to allow the cabin crew and passengers to move freely during the taxi portion, which helps them make <laughs> the connections. So. They, they also never prepared the cabin for landing. Uh, yeah. They also never got up. I rang that tell. attendant button a number of times asking for coffee. The seatbelt light might have still been on. Strapped in, though. Yeah. It was a test, that's what it was. I'm so conflicted. Dim on the lights. There we go, so I can see what the hell I'm doing. And we'll just shimmy to the right. Ground, Boeing 717 Tango CR, clear at Echo Taxi Terminal. Nice Boeing 717 Tango CR, Taxi Terminal ramp. Yeah. Uh, let's see. APU is coming up. We'll get the APU chat going momentarily here. Terminal, let's verify yeah, what. No, it has not started. Number one, two, five. Yeah. Take a Bakersfield ground or right here. A zero right. Taxi via yeah, Alpha. Uh, not so much on the A. Oh, here it comes. Okay. Yeah, so you got to push and hold in the start position. Got it. So I can do APU. Oh, I won't do the bleed yet. Uh, let's see. Kill the strobes. I forgot to do those. We're on the post landing here. Strobes. Everything else is on still. Oh, landing sure. lights do a lot now. Thanks for being there on the taxiway. <laughs> I can't tell when the landing lights are on or off. No, they like, work brilliantly on the taxiway, but on the runway, they're garbage. I think I accidentally clicked them on at one point, though. You did uh, hear yeah. the taxi. Yeah. Okay. okay. I couldn't see APU's it. Available. Dang. So, APU gen is up. Uh, do you want the APU bleed now? Um, no, you can leave it. Nope. Just, actually, yeah, I guess you can probably turn it on. It wouldn't make a difference. APU right? bleeds are on. Uh, I'm just going to pick a terminal. Pick a gate, I should say. Okay. So we're running, th we're running off the APU generator alone now, which probably isn't a big deal. 
I wonder why that is. Let me test this. Hang on a second. Oh, there we go. Ah. Turn. Oop, now I've lost the lights. Oh, it should be back again. I don't know why we lost the gens. I think it's not letting us run off of both the APU and the main engine. Yeah, I've turned uh, the taxi light off just so I don't blind the uh, marshaller. Okay. You know, Still. courtesy. Even though I made the cabin crew sit through the entire flight, I don't want to blind the <laughs> marshaller. Alright, I'll keep going on the engine stuff here. Learning in these systems, so... Okay, so we can move to APU Gen. That's done. And we can go to APU Bleed. That's done. So I'll kill the engine bleeds. That's done. So we are ready to sacrifice the engine at any time. Okay, parking brake is set. You can... APU Gen is on. APU Bleed. Yeah, you give me the APU Bleed, you can shut the engines down. Yep, APU Bleed is set. And we can kill the fuel to the engines. There they go. One and two gone. Cooling and spooling nicely. And brake set in John Wayne at uh, 852 local. Not too shabby. Too shabby at all, my friend. So, I missed roughly an hour and a half for the chat. I don't think I'll go back through it all. <laughs> wow, frame rates are hurting here at John Wayne. Were you, were you feeling it on the downwind? Um, no, it was when we were coming off San, San, Santa Catalina, um, coming across the coast. My frames just were dying. Gotcha. But um, now everything is nice. That night lighting on the approach was just, oh my god. Hey, Jack. I thought that was you whispering uh, terrible things in my ear. I was. I was. Yeah. Just, uh... Never that, I was looking at the approach, and man, Santa the car's moving and everything. Yeah. Did you see that? It's or nice, that isn't it? Me? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. So what'd you think, Jack? Yeah, it was a good flight. Yeah. You guys having fun? With yeah, this he says. Cockpit? Sorry, hang on. I'm just getting over the... Yeah, good flight. <coughs> wow, yeah, I was like watching like off. three streams for a while there. <laughs> now it's just you guys on. Yeah. Uh, you guys having fun with the la everything going well with the landing and, and uh, figuring out what, who's got what? Yeah, that's great. That's yeah, cool. Chris was helpful there. Chris ATC said that because um, I brought up the question of who would, when we get an altitude change, is that considered part of the primary flight controls? You know, do I just blindly reach over and set the new altitude and get concurrence from the pilot flying, or does the pilot flying do it? Does the pilot flying doing it? And Chris ATC suggested it would normally be the pilot not flying would do it, and you just seek concurrence. Just make sure the pilot flying actually says. You know, checked or seen or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. you double check that, and make sure. Does that sound right to you? Uh, I'm, I'd have to talk to Joe. Joe would, because uh, he sees it all the time. I'll, I'm going to be talking to him tomorrow, and I'll mention to, to him. We're probably going to go through and and outline just how you would do it, just so everybody knows. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there's also a, yeah, there's also a couple other idea. pilots. There's another couple of, couple of pilots I'd like to ask uh, to get it just right. Because you guys are having a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We've got to fix the VORs, honestly. The thing we're struggling the most is the has nothing to do with your airplane. It's the um, the VOR transmission distances are just completely wrong in the NAV database. Well, X-Plane so, 1030 does something to them, and I haven't been able to check that yet. Is that right? Yeah, they did. They changed long-range distance. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Completely. Well, it's always been historically that the in the NAV database, they're not really designated as terminal low or high. They are, they just have a distance associated with them, and what you get mm -hmm. is what you get. And some of them are coded as being 125 or 140. Mm -hmm. Well, 40 is way too short for things like fellows. I know fellows is uh, only 40, and that's just way too short for fellows. Yes, sir, but whatever. Hang on, bigger shell tower. Uh, I am your tower controller, not your departure controller. Um, you guys like flying at night? Frequency will be one, wow, one yeah, point eight. quite a bit. Two bubbles, yeah. hangover, I'm a three zero right, clip or take off. I killed the, uh, the APU and connected the ground power in the air cart, so. Yeah, tremendous fun, man. I really, really enjoy that.
Yeah, Chris, uh, Chris ATC in the stream there. He's another uh, real world controller, real world pilot guy. So he's excellent. Some good input there. Yeah, we didn't break anything. The landing was okay. We didn't. Pff, um, pressurization system worked as advertised. We sort of troubleshot that a little bit in the flight just because we were experimenting with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So much troubleshot it. But yeah, really, really good. Yeah. It's just nice because everything works the way you'd expect it to, right? And that's that's what makes it easy. Not easy, but it's no surprises. Yeah. Well, if the pressurization never breaks on you, if you get confused by it, just put it on standby and set the cabin altitude to whatever. Oh, okay. And keep this the uh, rate at rate where it's at right now. Cool. Or set it to standby if you're going to do circuits so it doesn't pressurize anything. Oh, right. Yeah. It's actually in the supplemental which we didn't include, but we might yeah. eventually. I'm sure this airplane comes with fantastic manuals. I've yet to really had a chance to look at them. Well, I, even I haven't read everything. <laughs> and, and I've been working on this forever. Yeah, well, you probably yeah, don't have to read the a... manual, though, yeah. Well, I do, yeah. I do. Uh, there's a lot in there. Did you guys, did you guys actually go up to 350? Yeah, no issues, man, and it sort of worked out. We planned for like a 2,000 foot per minute descent throughout. No, I mean, it just, it really worked out well. Still slippery? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but we didn't touch the speed brakes. I reach, I, I swear I was reaching for them. Like, they're bound to a joystick key for me. I reached for them, and Key said, nah, don't. And I'm like, how do you even see that, man? I'm sitting in my house like a thousand miles away. Like, you knew <laughs> I was reaching for the speed brakes. Yeah. Uh, but you got it down. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it really was. I cool. really like that approach. You guys have to, like, go back and watch that again uh, it's just watching the the traffic on the roadway oh, yeah. and all the other lights going yeah it looked really good it's good stuff man i think when i watch the replay it's just gonna be me breathing through my mouth the whole time was, i was concentrating pretty hard for sure that's pretty fun <laughs> uh you masked well that landing would look nice that was like, um no, something yeah no kidding that was my best landing ever in the 7-3 and my first one at night and the only one where i couldn't see the runway so well, it is actually a very easy plane to land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. yeah, well, it is. It, it is. It's well when you compare it to the Q400, which is just Ooh. oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. Know. Not as easy. No. Not with those uh, that torque going off. That's good. Then, That's uh, if you guys find it twitchy, because right, I, I I see Frugal is having a problem with it. Feel very twitchy to him. Okay. Uh, just set your um, sensitive your. If you go into uh, where you can set. What is that called? Uh, it's in the joystick settings. You set all the, the bars all the way to the right. That'll give you much finer control. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it makes sense, the curves. I set it anywhere between uh, 50 and, seven, and and 100. Maybe 75 might be good. I'm not sure how 100 is that good yet. It's just too sensitive. I mean, sorry, it's too fine of a control. Mm -hmm. um, but then, of course, then you have to get used to how the plane flies again when you reset those. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. be aware of that. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. reset them a couple of days before I did my stream on Friday, and look at my landing. <laughs> um, yeah, you had some uh, crazy winds, though, man. Well, the wind was crazy insane, winds. yeah. You, uh, I guess the wind has calmed down a bit uh, in SoCal, well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, there. Oh, yeah, it's like 220 <laughs> at 5. Like, we pretty much landed with it right down the pipe, and there wasn't much anyway, so that's good. That's good, that's good, guys. Yeah. Well, I'm going to fire the stream off, because it's near enough. Right. Uh, it is midnight here. So, for you guys who are still watching the stream, thank you so much. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll archive it. This will be a this will be a highlight. It'll stay up for a long, long time. So, thanks, guys, uh, on the Twitch end. Appreciate it. All right, good times. Thanks, Keith. I was just wondering if you're still here. I don't know. Machine you know, totally any... overheated and died. Uh, <laughs> any closing remarks? Uh, I had a great time up until the point my machine caught fire. Well, uh, good, good timing for it to do it. Not, what, not that there is a good time. Yeah. Machine's catching fire. Not quite on fire, but no, my memory got fried and got a blue screen memory exception. Oh, no. And I may have lost the display. One of my displays looks Why? like it's unhappy. Pushing it really far. <laughs> it's that night landing man that got us. Yeah, running at 4.7 gigahertz in a hot, steamy Ooh. basement. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I can hear my machine working really hard to you. So. Yeah. All right, that was so, very enjoyable. Yeah. Had a great time. Good stuff Thanks, so far in the stream off. Is it is it off?